The Buick V6, popularly referred to as the 3800, originally 198 cu in 3.2L and initially marketed as Fireball at its introduction in 1962, was a large V6 engine used by General Motors. The block is made of cast iron and all use two valve per cylinder iron heads, actuated by pushrods. The engine, originally designed and manufactured in the United States, was also produced in later versions in Australia. The 3800 was on the Ward's 10 Best Engines of the 20th Century list, made Ward's yearly 10 Best list multiple times, and is one of the most produced engines in history. To date, over 25 million have been produced. In 1967, GM sold the design to Kaiser Jeep. The muscle car era had taken hold, and GM no longer felt the need to produce a V6, considered in North America an unusual engine configuration at the time. The energy crisis a decade later prompted the company to buy the design back from American Motors AMC, who had by that point bought Kaiser Jeep, and the descendants of the early 231 continue to be the most common GM V6 as it developed into a very durable and reliable design. Though the pre-3800 rear-wheel drive RWD V6 uses the Buick, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, Bop, bell housing pattern, an oddity of both the front-wheel drive forward and RWD 3800 V6 is that although it is a 90 degrees V6, it uses the GM 60 degrees V6 bell housing metric pattern. For use in the forward applications, the bell housings on the forward transmissions are altered slightly. This engine has the cylinders numbered 1, 3, 5 on the left-hand bank, front bank for forward applications, and 2, 4, 6 on the right-hand bank, the number 1 cylinder being the furthest from the flywheel end. The firing order is 1, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. The engine was produced at the Flint North plant in Flint, Michigan, with engine blocks and cylinder heads cast at the Gray Iron plant, now the GM Saginaw Metal Casting Operations plant, in Saginaw, Michigan. It is a derivative of Buick's 215 CU in 3.5L aluminium V8 family, which also went on to become the Rover V8, another engine with a very long life, 1960 to 2006. Topic. Fireball V6 The first engine in this family was introduced in 1961 for the 1962 model year Buick Special with Buick's 198CU in 3.2L engine, the first V6 in an American car. Because it was derived from Buick's 215CU in 3.5L aluminum V8, it has a 90 degrees bank between cylinders and an uneven firing pattern due to the crankshaft having only three crank pins set at 120 degrees apart, with opposing cylinders 1 to 2, 3 to 4 and 5 to 6 sharing a crank pin in, as do many V8 engines. The uneven firing pattern was often perceived as roughness, leading a former American Motors executive to describe it as rougher than a cob. In 1977, Buick redesigned the crankshaft to a split pin configuration to create an even firing version. The crank pins associated with the opposing cylinders were offset from each other by 30 degrees. The relatively small offset did not require flying arms to be incorporated, however a 3 mm thick flange was built in between the offset crank pins to prevent the connecting rod big ends from walking off the crank pin bearing journal and interfering with the adjacent big end. The 3 mm in thick flange effectively caused the connecting rods on the left-hand bank of cylinders forward bank for forward applications to move 3 mm in forward relative to the right-hand bank, but the engine block remained unchanged compared to the odd fire engine. 
Since the cylinder's center lines were no longer centralized over the crank pin bearing journals, the connecting rods were redesigned with the big ends offset from the piston pin ends by 1.5 mm in. The engine in this configuration became known to have off-center bore spacing. The off-center design continued up until the 1988 LN3 version of the engine, when the left-hand bank of cylinders was moved forward relative to the right-hand bank. Although the actual bore spacing between cylinders on the same bank remained unchanged at 4.24 in mm, the LN3 and later engines became known to have on-center bore spacing. Topic 198 Buick Division, concerned about high manufacturing costs of their innovative aluminum 215 V8, sought to develop a cheaper, cast iron engine based on the same tooling. They settled on an unusual 90 degrees V6 layout that was essentially the architecture of the 215, less two cylinders. In initial form, it had a bore and stroke of 3.625 in times 3.1875 in 92.08 mm times 80.96 mm, for an overall displacement of 198 cu in 3.2 L. It weighed about 35 pounds 16 kilograms more than the aluminum engine, but was far cheaper to produce. Dubbed the Fireball V6, it became the standard engine in the 1962 Buick Special. In the test that year, Road & Track was impressed with Buick's practical, new V6, saying it sounds and performs exactly like the aluminum V8 in most respects. Topic. 225 The bore was increased to 3.75 in 95.25 mm, and stroke increased to 3.4 in 86.4 mm, increasing displacement to 225 cu in 3.7 L. Since the engine was similar to the popular small block Buick V8, now with a cast iron block and displacement of 300 cu in 4.9 l, the engine was made cheaply at the same factory with much of the same tooling. This engine was used in Buick's intermediate-sized Special and Skylark models from 1964 to 1967 and Oldsmobile's mid-sized F85 Cutlass models for 1964 and 1965. 1964–1965 models featured a single-barrel Rochester monojet, producing 155 horsepower, 116 kilowatts. In 1966–1967, the one-barrel was replaced with a two-barrel Rochester 2GV, giving the engine a 5-horsepower boost to 160 horsepower, 119 kilowatts. The V6 was dropped after the 1967 model year in favor of a conventional 250 cu in 4.1 L inline-6 engine built by the Chevrolet division, and the tooling was sold to Kaiser Jeep. Topic. Dauntless In 1965, Kaiser Jeep began using the Buick 225 in Jeep CJs. It was known as the Dauntless V6 and used a much heavier flywheel than the Buick version to damp vibrations resulting from the engine's firing pattern. Buick sold the tooling for this engine to Kaiser in 1967, as the demand for the engine was waning steadily in an era of V8s and muscle cars. When American Motors AMC bought Jeep, the V6 was replaced with AMC straight six engines, but the ownership of the V6 tooling remained with AMC. Applications, 1966-1971 Jeep Jeepster and Jeepster Commando 1966-1971 CJ-5-1966-1971 CJ-6 Topic 231 
The 1973 oil crisis prompted GM to look for more economical engines than the V8s of 350, 400 and 454, 455 of a cubic inches that powered most General Motors cars and trucks during that time. At that time, the only small Engines generally offered by GM were built by the Chevrolet division including the 140 CU in 2.3L OHC aluminum inline 4 engine used in the subcompact Chevy Vega and a 250 CU in 4.1L straight 6 cylinders used in smaller Chevy, Buick, Oldsmobile and Pontiac models, whose design routes dated back to the 1962 Chevy 2 Nova. One quick idea was tried by Buick engineers, taking an old Fireball V6 picked up at a junkyard and installing it into a 1974 Buick Apollo. The solution worked so well that GM wanted AMC to put the engine back into production. However, AMC's cost per unit was deemed as too high. Instead of buying completed engines, GM made an offer to buy back the tooling and manufacturing line from AMC in April, 1974, and began building the engines on August 12. With production back within GM, Buick reintroduced the V6 that fall in certain 1975 models. A move made possible by the fact that foundations for the old V6 machinery were still intact at Buick's engine assembly plant in Flint, Michigan, so it was easy to put the old tooling back in place and begin production at least two years ahead of the normal schedule that would have been required to create new tooling. The bore was enlarged to 3.8 in 97 mm, identical to the Buick 350 and Olds 307 volts 8, yielding 231 cu in 3.8L displacement. 78,349 231s were installed in Buicks for 1975. Due to difficulties with the new fuel economy and emissions standards, the engine produced just 110 horsepower, 82 kilowatts. Topic LD5 In 1978, GM began to market the 231 as the 3.8 liter as metric engine sizes became common in the United States. The RPO code was LD5, though California emissions versions were called LC6. Starting in 1979, the engine was used in the front-wheel drive Buick Riviera, though still with a longitudinal mounting. Larger valves and better intake and exhaust boosted the power output for 1979. A turbocharged version was introduced as the pace car at the 1976 Indianapolis 500, and a production turbo arrived in 1978. The turbo 3.8 received sequential fuel injection and a wasted spark distributorless ignition system in 1984. In 1986 an air-to-air -air Garrett intercooler was added and the RPO code became LC2. The LC2 engine has a bore X stroke of 3.8 in times 3.4 in 96.5 mm times 86.4 mm. The horsepower ratings for 1986 and 1987 were 235 and 245 horsepower, 238 and 248 PS, 175 and 183 kilowatts, respectively. The limited production GNX benefited from additional factory modifications such as a ceramic turbocharger, more efficient Garrett intercooler, low restriction exhaust system and revised programming which resulted in a 300 horsepower, 304 PS, 224 kilowatts factory rating. The turbo 3.8 liter was used in the following vehicles, 1978-1987 Buick Regal Sport Coupe, T-Type, Grand National, Base T, Limited T, Turbo T, and GNX 1978-1980 Buick LeSabre Sport Coupe 1979-1980 Buick Century Turbo Coupe and Sedan 1979-1985 Buick Riviera S-Type, T-Type and less than one 
100 convertibles 1980-1981 Chevrolet Monte Carlo 1989 Pontiac Trans Am Turbos Turbocharged 1987 Buick Regal Grand National GNX was called America's quickest automobile, and the model continues to be collected and appreciated today. Topic. LC9 A smaller version of this engine was produced in 1978 and 1979 for the Century, Regal and Chevrolet Monza. The bore was reduced to 3.5 in 88.9 mm, resulting in an engine of 196 cu in 3.2 L piston displacement. The RPO code was LC9. Initially this engine produced 90 horsepower, 67 kilowatts, but in 1979 it received the same improvements in the cylinder heads as did the LD5 and therefore power increased to 105 horsepower, 78 kilowatts. Topic LC4 In response to rising gas prices, a larger 252 cu in 4.1L version of the 3.8-liter LD5 V6 was produced from 1980 through 1984 and marketed as an alternative to a V8. The bore was enlarged to 3.965 in 100.7 mm, yielding an output of 125 horsepower, 93 kilowatts, and 205 pound-feet, 278 Nm. This engine was used in many large rear-wheel drive Buicks and in some models from each of GM's other divisions, including Cadillac which offered the big Buick V6 in several models from 1980 to 1982 as a credit option to the troublesome V8 6-4 engine used in 1981 and early versions of the aluminum block Cadillac HT4100 V8 introduced in 1982. It was also the standard powerplant in the front drive Riviera and Olds Toronado from 1981 to 1984. Additionally, the 4.1 block was used unsuccessfully at Indianapolis for racing. Its only weakness was the intake valve seals. This was the first naturally aspirated GMV6 to feature a four-barrel carburetor. Topic. LK9 A small 181 cu in 3.0L version of the Buick V6 was produced for GM's 1980s front-wheel drive cars. Introduced in 1982, it was a lower deck version of the 3.8 designed for transverse application in the new GMA platform cars such as the Buick Century and Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. It shared the same bore size as its larger sibling, but featured a smaller stroke of 2.66 in 68 mm. It used a Rochester E2ME2BBL carburetor and the VIN code for the engine is E. Applications 1982-1985 Buick Century 1982-1985 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra 1985 Oldsmobile 98 1985 Buick Electra Topic LN7 The LN7 is a multiport fuel injected version of the LK9 It was introduced for 1985 and used the VIN code L It was replaced in 1989 with the 3.3 Applications 1986 Oldsmobile Delta 88 1986 Buick LeSabre 1986-1988 Buick Skylark 1985-1987 Buick Somerset 1985-1987 Pontiac Grand Am 1985-1988 Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais Topic 3.8 forward LG2 LG3. 
In mid-1984, the 3.8-litre LD5 engine was modified for transverse mounting in smaller, forward vehicles, and equipped with multi-point fuel injection 1984–1985 models used a distributor and a distributorless wasted spark ignition system was added for all engines produced in 1986 and later. In 1986, it received sequential fuel injection SFI and it was initially produced in two forms, the LG2 with flat lifters tappets, and the LG3 with a roller camshaft and lifters. The latter was offered in various models through 1988. From 1986, the 3.8 had a revised, crankshaft-driven oil pump which eliminated a long-standing problem with pump housing wear and loss of prime. Power produced by this engine was VIN code B, flat lifters tappets, 140 horsepower, 104 kilowatts at 4,400 revolutions per minute, 200 pound-feet, 271 Nm at 2,000 revolutions per minute. VIN code 3, roller lifters, tappets. 125 horsepower, 93 kilowatts at 4,400 revolutions per minute, 195 pound-feet, 264 Nm at 2,000 revolutions per minute, 1984-1985 MPFI. 150 horsepower, 112 kilowatts at 4,400 revolutions per minute, 200 pound-feet, 271 Nm at 2,200 revolutions per minute, 1986 to 1988 SFI LG3. Topic: 3,800 V6. Topic Pre Series One Topic LN three naturally aspirated Introduced in 1988, the 3800 LN3 would later be loosely considered the pre-series one, although the older 3.8 SFI LG3 was still available that year in some models. Designated initially by VIN code C, the multiport fuel-injected 3800 LN3 was a major redesign, featuring changes such as a balance shaft, on-center bore spacing, use of a 3x, 18x crank trigger system, and other improvements. This generation continued in use in several GM products into the early 1990s. It produced 165 horsepower, 123 kilowatts and 210 pound-feet, 285 Nm. The LN3 is very closely related to the Series 1L27 and Series 1L67 supercharged. In fact, supercharger-related hardware can be fitted to an LN3 without changing the cylinder heads, ECM reprogramming required. The L27 has a two-piece, upper plenum intake and lower intake, the LN3 is all one piece. <laughs> 3300 LG7 A smaller 3.3-litre 3300 was introduced in 1989 and produced through 1993. It is effectively a lower deck version of the 3800, with a smaller bore and stroke of 3.7 in times 3.16 in 94.0 mm times 80.3 mm for 3340 cc 3.3 L, 203.8 cu in. Like the 3800, it used a cast iron block and heads, push rods, and hydraulic lifters. Unlike the 3800, however, it used a batch fire injection system rather than sequential injection, as evidenced by the lack of a cam position sensor. It also did not have a balance shaft. 
Power output was 160 horsepower, 119 kilowatts at 5200 revolutions per minute and 185 pound feet, 251 Nm at 2000 revolutions per minute with a 5500 revolutions per minute redline. Applications 1989-1993 Buick Century 1989-1993 Buick Skylark 1992-1993 Pontiac Grand Am 1992-1993 Oldsmobile Achiever 1989-1991 Oldsmobile Calais 1989-1993 Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra Topic. Series 1 Topic. L27 SI naturally aspirated The LN3 was replaced by the 3791 cc 3.8L 231.3 cu in L27 in 1991-1992 and produced 170 horsepower 127 kilowatts from 1992 onward this engine was referred to as the series 13800 or 3800 TPI tuned port injection in Australia, the LN3 was also replaced by the L27 by Holden who used the engine in the Series 2, 1991, the N Commodore range. However, the Australian L27 retained the LN3's one-piece upper intake and lower plenum. Power was still boosted to 127 kilowatts, 170 horsepower for the Holden L27 before being boosted to 130 kilowatts, 177 PS, 174 horsepower in the revised VR Commodore in 1993. The L36 made its debut in 1995. Topic L67 SI supercharged The Series 1 supercharged engine went through two supercharger revisions, Gen 2 and Gen 3, and the horsepower improved between initial launch and the time that the Series 2 L36 was introduced. The M62 supercharger was manufactured by Eaton, for the GM 3800 SI engine. HP was rated at 205 for 1991-1993 engines, Gen 2 supercharger, with a 2.55-inch pulley, and 225 for 1994-1995 engines, Gen 3 supercharger. All of the additional horsepower for 1994-95 Gen 3 supercharged engines was gained by using epoxy, not Teflon as commonly believed, coated supercharger rotors to improve efficiency, a larger supercharger inlet and throttle body, thus the 1994-1995 utilized a 2.85-inch pulley versus the 2.55-inch pulley on the Gen 2. The easiest way to spot the difference between the Gen 2 and Gen 3 is the smaller pulley and the ribs on the side of the Gen 2 extend all the way down the sides, while the Gen 3 ribs stay on only the top, they perform slightly differently and interchanging one without tuning may result in strange behavior of the engine. Redline on Gen 3 engines is at 6,000 revolutions per minute but the ECM will shift at 5,400 revolutions per minute without performance shift enabled. Applications, 1991-1995, Buick Park Avenue Ultra 1992-1995, Oldsmobile 88 LS, Opt, LSS, Opt, Oldsmobile 98 Regency Elite, Opt, Touring Sedan Pontiac Bonneville Shea with H4 URPO, Not Badged, SLE, Opt. SC Package, SSE, Opt, and SSEI 1995 only, Buick Riviera, Opt. Topic. Series 2 Introduced in 1995, the Series 2 is quite a different engine. 
It is also by far the most popular of the 3,800 family for its power, smoothness, fuel efficiency, and reliability, although the stroke for the 3.8-litre engine remained at 3.4 in 86 mm, and the bore remained at 3.8 in 97 mm. That said, the engine architecture was vastly changed. The deck height is shorter than the Series 1, reducing weight and total engine package size. This required that the piston connecting rods be shortened one in 25.4 mm, and the crankshaft was also redesigned. A new intake manifold improved breathing while a redesigned cylinder head featured larger valves and a higher compression ratio. The result was 205 horsepower, 153 kilowatts, and 230 pound-feet, 312 Nm, better fuel economy, and 26 pounds, 12 kilograms, lighter overall weight, to 392 pounds, 178 kilograms. This 3,800 weighs only 22 pounds, 10 kilograms more than the all-aluminum high-feature V6 that currently dominates GM's six-cylinder applications, despite being an all-cast-iron design. The new intake manifold greatly improved airflow. To meet emissions standards, an EGR tube was placed in the intake manifold to reduce combustion temperatures. The 3800 Series 2 was on the Ward's 10 Best Engines list for 1995 through 1997. GM recalled 1.5 million vehicles with this engine on April 14, 2009 due to risk of fire from engine oil leaking under the valve cover gaskets onto hot exhaust manifolds. The fire could spread to the nearby plastic spark plug wire retainers on the valve cover and then to the rest of the engine compartment. GM fitted the affected vehicles with redesigned spark plug wire retainers. These engines were noted for having problems with the plastic upper intake manifold cracking around the EGR passage. The engine would then hydrolock. The lower intake gaskets and upper intake manifolds were revised, correcting all these issues. Topic. L36 SII naturally aspirated Topic. L67 SII supercharged The L67 is the supercharged version of the 3800 Series 2 L36 and appeared in 1996, one year after the normally aspirated version. It uses the Eaton Generation 3M90 supercharger with a 3.8 in 97mm pulley, a larger throttle body, and different fuel injectors, different cylinder heads, as well as different lower intake manifold and pistons than the L36 uses. Both engines share the same engine blocks, but compression is reduced from 9.4, one in the L36 to 8.5, one for the L67. GM listed the engine output as 240 horsepower, 179 kilowatts, and 280 pound-feet, 380 Nm, of torque. Final drive ratios are reduced in most applications, for better fuel economy and for improved use of the engine's torque in the low RPM range. Like most 3,800 volt sixes, the engine is well known for its reliability and low maintenance costs. The engine is a popular choice for aftermarket modification thanks to its very strong internals and impressive power gains from basic upgrades. The engine was built in Flint, Michigan and was certified LEV in 2001. 1996-2005 Buick Park, Avenue Ultra 1997.5-2004 Buick Regal GS, GSE, GSX, SLP 1996-1999 Buick Riviera, optional 1996-97, STD 1998-99 2004-2005 Chevrolet Impala SS 2004-2005 Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS Supercharged, Intimidator SS, Dale Jr. 
SS 1996 to 1999 Oldsmobile 88 LSS Limited 1996 to 2003 Pontiac Bonneville SSEI 1997 to 2003 Pontiac Grand Prix GTP GTX SLP 1996 to 2004 Holden Commodore VS Series 2 VT VX VY 1996 to 2004 Holden Caprice and Statesman VS Series 2 and 3, WH, Week 2001 to 2004 Holden Monero V2 VZ CV6. Topic Series 3 The Series 3 engines include many changes. The upper and lower intake manifold is now aluminum on the naturally aspirated models. Intake ports are mildly improved, 1.83 in 46 mm intake valves, instead of 1.8 in 46 mm as on Series 2, and 1.52 in 39 mm exhaust valves were introduced in 2003 engines, just before switching to Series 3. Electronic throttle control is added to all versions, as is returnless fuel injection. Stronger powdered metal center forged connecting rods are used in 2004 plus supercharged, and 2005 plus naturally aspirated engines, instead of the cast iron style from Series 2 engines. Emissions are also reduced. In 2005, it was the first gasoline engine in the industry to attain SULEV Super Ultra Low Emissions Vehicle Emissions Certification. Also note that Series 3 engines are the base for any 3,800 produced for the 2004 year and up. This means the same block, heads, and connecting rods apply to any remaining Series 2 engines made after 2004 also. The difference is that Series 3 engines receive the new superchargers, Generation 5 Eaton M90 if equipped, intake manifolds, fuel systems, and electronics. Topic. L26 SIII naturally aspirated The L26 is the Series 3 version of the 3800. It is still a 3.8 L design. Compression remains at 9.4, 1 as with previous L36s, but the aluminum upper and lower intake 2004 plus and stronger connecting rods 2005 plus are the primary physical changes. The powdered metal connecting rods were meant to be introduced in 2004 along with the L32s, but the GM plant in Bay City, Michigan that supplies the Flint, Michigan plant could not achieve the desired production dates in time for that engine year. This engine was used in the following vehicles 2004-2008 Pontiac Grand Prix 2005 to 2009 Buick Lacrosse Allure 2006 to 2008 Buick Lucerne Topic L32 SIII supercharged The L32 is a supercharged series 3 Introduced in 2004, the main differences between the L67 and the L32 are the L32's electronic throttle control, slightly improved cylinder head design, and updated Eaton supercharger, the Generation 5 M90. Power output is up to 260 horsepower, 194 kilowatts, in the Grand Prix GTP. As with the L67, premium fuel, 91 octane or higher, is required, but the PCM can compensate for lower octane fuel at the cost of acceleration. The use of below 87 octane fuel can cause detonation that eventually leads to engine damage and failure. Applications 2004-2005 Pontiac Grand Prix GTP 2006-2007 Pontiac Grand Prix GT Topic. Special editions Topic. 
Discontinuation Production of the 3800 V6 engine officially ended on Friday, August 22, 2008 when Plant 36 was closed. There was a closing ceremony and speakers who extolled the virtues of the engine. Originally GM had set this date for January 1, 1999, however, due to the vast number of complaints from both investors and customers because of the popularity and reliability of the engine, the date was extended. At the end of production, the LZ4 3500 OHV V6 replaced the naturally aspirated 3800 applications, and the LY7 3.6 LD OHC V6 replaced the supercharged 3800 applications. See also Buick V8 engine List of GM engines <laughs>